Jay Hardick. I'm here with Kimberly Roberto for another Maximize Living webinar. We really appreciate your attendance tonight, and we look forward to making the time uh, very much worth, worth, worth the investment of the 60 minutes. So uh, we're going to talk a lot about toxicity tonight and what you can do about it. Um, you know, looking through this, it actually came to our attention, uh, looking back through the years that really dealing with toxicity really isn't necessarily a new concept. Kimberly, I think um, you were going to talk a little bit about that. Yep. So you can see this um, magazine. It was Time Magazine here from 1980. And um, this was the administrator of the EPA back at the time saying, of all man's inventions and interventions in the natural order, none is accelerating quite so alarmingly as the creation of chemical compounds. And it goes on to say that there's almost 35,000 of those used in the U.S. classified by the EPA as being either definitely or potentially hazardous to human health. And this was in 1980, so we're way beyond that and really in no better shape and, in fact, are worse off than uh, that point. So this is not something new. It's just that it's becoming such an epidemic problem that it's causing so many health problems around us. And, you know, the truth is, you know, this stuff builds up over time, so we really started to worry about things in the, see things in the 80s, but now we're just seeing things get worse and worse. Um, Kim, I'm not sure I have control of the, the screens. Maybe you could just hit the mouse, please. Okay. Um, or maybe, Maria, you can give me control so I can move some of these slides. There are three forms of toxicity, and obviously one is physical. That would be literally radiation toxicity, uh, just over vibration, over, over sound toxicity. And then you've also got biological toxicity, which are you know, some of these fungal toxins and other problems. Um, you know, other, another thing that you might see with, um, uh, obviously we're going to talk about tonight, really specifically relates to chemical toxicity. Uh, because obviously uh, we're no longer dealing in this country with as many you know biological problems. We're really dealing with a lot of chemical problems. Um, go to the next slide. You know when you look at what goes on around the world, you'll see that around the world you've got you know and, and I don't want to just say around the world, but historically, yeah, we needed to worry about deficiencies of vitamin K and deficiencies of vitamin C and deficiencies of vitamin D and um, iron problems creating uh, anemia and malnutrition, which is obviously still a huge problem everywhere. Um, but the reality is, if you do look to what we're dealing with now in North America, we're dealing with more with toxicities. So let's, um, Kim, we'll just uh, get that next one up. When you yeah, look around at what goes on now, we, we see that we've got um, heavy metals in our waters. Uh, we're dealing with lead, mercury. We know there's toxic doses of medications. We do know that there's medications found in the waters. Um, and, and also, we're looking at these inorganic compounds like plastics and pesticides. I'm here in Canada. A couple of years ago, they banned the Nalgene hard bottles because of the fact that they were causing cancers in people. And never mind, you know, uh, Kimberly, you live in Atlanta. I live in a fairly industrial part of the world as well. You know, I'm around emissions literally every single day. It's not something that I can get away from. Right. So we're going to go through. These are just some questions to start your mind working and just to show you that these are things we're exposed to every day. And it's really unavoidable. So plastic containers, eating non-organic uh, meat or dairy, using a microwave, using Teflon or nonstick cookware, personal care products. We're going to talk about that tonight. Uh, city water or tap water, processed foods and drinks. Um, do you use household cleaning supplies, commercial household cleaning supplies? And do you have silver um, amalgam fillings in your mouth? So I'm going to let BJ take over on this one. The thing is, you know, when you look at all these things, and again, we showed a magazine from the 80s, but this is just 2010, clearly showing that it's not your genes. You know, unfortunately, many people have been led to believe that it's all whether or not you have, um, you know, bad genes or bad luck, whether or not you get disease. The International Agency for Research on Cancer and the World Health Organization have both announced that 80% of cancers are absolutely attributed to environmental factors, not necessarily what's going on with your genes. And we'll get to another article that just recently came out here about this. Some of the more common toxicity symptoms that we'll see, difficulty losing weight. These are all, these are all new age problems. These were not nearly as bad in the 70s and 80s as they are now because there's been this accumulation of toxins um, across the generations. Hormone problems, thyroid, estrogen, you name it. Brain fog, we see the number one uh, class of medications now are mind-altering medications. That also relates to things like insomnia, headaches, fatigue, depression, digestive problems. I'll speak about my story later. And again, when you want to think about you know, environmental triggers, no wonder we're seeing more people with allergies and asthma. 
My greatest concern, though, are for the poor folks who do have toxicity building within their system, and they really have no symptoms yet whatsoever. Um, obviously, our model is to help people make their health a priority before they ever get symptoms. Uh, because when you do look around at the world, for many people, it is just a matter of time. Uh, we do know that the outdoor environment is much more polluted than the, sorry, the indoor environment is much more polluted than the outdoor environment. And more and more, we're spending time indoors. We're around more of these indoor chemicals. We're around in more, in more of these uh, fungal toxins. Um, and and, and, and the, the list goes on and on. The outdoors are actually cleaner than the indoors, but we know how dirty the outdoors are. Kim? Yep, and BJ, I think you had this um, article, so I may let you talk yeah, about that. Yeah, this, yeah, I mean, this, this was last week, you know, so we have Time Magazine from January of this year. Well, sure enough, last week, you know, this is being brought to the President's panel. How many, and this is in, you know, new, uh, you know, NBC New York News, showing that, again, environmental car carcinogens, those are things that cause cancer, um, they, cause a, you know, they cause greatly more cancer than previously believed. You know, the war on cancer started in the 70s, and, uh, you know, really, you know, cancer actually has not gotten any better. It, some numbers may suggest that it is slightly better because we can detect it earlier, but just early detection has nothing to do with prevention whatsoever. What they're saying here is, listen, more and more needs to go into not treatment of cancers, but what do we do about early prevention? And the reality is, you know, Kim's going to go through these everyday toxic exposures because as much as we'd like to not be around these things, we are. So Kimberly, why don't you go through these uh, um, five uh, most common things. And these, these are actually from the New Maximized Living book, Cruise Shipper Nursing Home, explained in yeah. detail, but we'll talk about them. And even if you're diligent about trying to stay away from these things, you're just exposed just through eating out, um, you know, being out in the environment, going out into public. So even though you're diligent about trying to stay, avoid these things, it's still something we're exposed to. So. And we're going to get into these in some detail, but household products, which would include cleaning supplies, and we'll talk about um, Teflon and microwaves, personal care products. I have some good stats for you there, especially women need to listen up for that one. Um, pesticides and food additives, our food supplies loaded with toxins, um, tap water, and then heavy metals and biotoxins. So we're going to go through some of these just to kind of expose where we are with all of these toxins. So um, things like uh, dishwashing detergent. Oven cleaner, um, which has lye and ammonia in it. Surface cleaners, which has the surfactants in it. Antibacterial soaps with triclosan. So these things have all been tied to numerous health conditions. So benzene has been tied with leukemia. Um, some of the petroleum products linked with cancer, triclosan, and liver Kimber damage. And Kimberly, you know, pe people will notice that these conventional products, they may have a, a, a symbol on it that says that it will explode if you light it on fire. Yeah. But they never, li they never list the ingredients. So they don't. They, they only need to let you know whether or not we, it has immediate problems. You know, if you light it on fire or if it spontaneously combusts. It, 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 the, 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 there are very, very. You know, there, there's no warnings about what happens long term when you're exposed to these things. But look at the ingredients. Look at all the studies that we know um, are the results of these ingredients, and we can only imagine what's happening every single day. In fact, the the toxic load for kids are usually worse because they're closer to the floor and they're inhaling these things and they're licking these things. So, you know, children are at a real risk if we're not using more natural products in the home. Yeah, and you see some of these, these um, toxic exposures bioaccumulating and showing up later in life, but what we're seeing now is these things manifesting in children, um, especially with asthma and allergies and all of that. So it's greatly affecting our kids. So here's another one, um, Teflon that has, contains the PFOAs. These, this has been tied to child development problems, liver and pancreas, uh, gland tumors, thyroid dysfunction, and it's actually predicted that it's going to be banned pretty soon here, 2015. And there's class action lawsuits already on these products. So in your home, you definitely want to get rid of these things. You want to go more towards um, some of the more natural products. There's something called green pan or cast iron skillets, uh, stainless steel. You want to stay away from the aluminum and the Teflon coated or the PFO PFOA coated uh, materials. So, but again, even if you're eating out, this is what they're using in the restaurants. So, as good as yeah, you are you know, at the home. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I have a pretty clean home, and I don't use Teflon, but I have no idea what they're using in the restaurant. You know, so, so, and 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 also, you know, I know in cities neighboring Dupont, there's all kinds of class action lawsuits <laughs> because of people inhaling the stuff that literally is just you know downwind from the plant. So, you can only imagine, you know, what happens from other plants. Right. Um, 
You know, and then you, you get something like microwaves. Well, listen, I mean, it's been proven for years now that not only do these things deplete minerals and nutrients from food, but they actually create free radicals and byproducts that your body can't recognize. You throw things that your body can't recognize within your system, and you do have limitations of matter. There's only so much that your body can do. At a certain point, you will need help detoxing of all of those things. Right. So when we move into personal care products, and I mentioned that women really need to listen up here because this survey for, uh, that was done by the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics says the average woman uses nine personal care products every single day and can be exposed to 100 plus different chemicals. And if you look at some of these things, and most people are using all of these and more maybe, perfumes, 250 to 400 chemical components. Perfumes are one of the worst um, offenders out there. Lipsticks, 33. Body lotion, 32. Mascara, 20. So um, we have to be really careful that we're using the right kind of products um, if you're going to use them at all. So this is a great exposure for especially women. So something like DEA is in, um, is in just about everything, 600 home and personal care products. Um, and it has shown cancerous activity and um, great detriment to human health. So then things like propylene glycol, same thing. You can see all of these, um, these effects on health that come from these things. And propylene glycol is in just about everything, as is sodium lauryl sulfate, so also called SLS. So you really yeah, need yeah, to start reading your labels. Propylene, propylene glycol is really in, in, you know, and Kimberly says it's in just about everything, um, you know, th that, that would include antifreeze. So, <laughs> you know, what, what people need to read, somebody, somebody said to me the, last week, they said, wait a second, if we know these things cause cancer, if we know they cause liver abnormalities and all these problems, how are they still allowed on the market? Well, listen, folks, I don't have a, a slide of this, but you know, I, can, I can show you in my office uh, advertisements for medications, and you flip over to the back page, and it says that this medication may cause cancer. Uh, there are all kinds of products that are allowed on the free market today, even though we do know they may or that they do cause cancer. So please. Remember, just because something's allowed on the market does not mean that it's safe. Usually with these things, they're swept under the carpet, and it's just a matter of time uh, before, you know, obviously we're, we hope to forget that they once existed. And some of the companies will use the argument that, you know, it's in such small quantities, but you have to deal with the bioaccumulation problem. So even in small yeah. quantities, when you're using nine products a day that contain these things, it accumulates in your system. You know, with, with additives in food, you've got to realize there's 300 food additives and three, sorry, 3,000 food additives, preservatives, and colorings that are approved by the FDA. You know, they are only studied to determine whether or not somebody has an immediate reaction, um, it, whether or not they're allowed. But the problem is now we're having 150 pounds of additives every year per person just because they're used in so many things. Pesticides, again, that's not necessarily an additive, but they're obviously used. Uh, you know, to kill germs that may, uh, you know, be on crops and so forth. Well, you've got um, uh, 1,600 chemicals are used in the production of pesticides. Three million tons used worldwide. There are all kinds of books on the damages that pesticides cause. And in fact, you know, many of the references they're in at uh, Kimberly and, and my book, which is Maximize Living Nutrition Plans. Again, the biggest problem when you look down at the screen, it talks about cancers, breast cancer, childhood cancers. Uh, and all these hormone problems, you know, these pesticides, all these, what they're called xenoestrogens, they mimic estrogens in your body. And obviously, most tumor, tumors are hormone-induced. That's why we want to get away from pesticides or anything that mimics estrogen, which is the problem with most toxins. You, d you do need to realize that there are safer ways. Uh, obviously, if you go to foodnews.org or get this from our book, um, we clearly list the, you know, the clean 15 vegetables, the ones that you don't need to necessarily buy organic. We'll also list the dirty dozen. You, know, you want to take something like a peach. You want to take something like a red pepper. You want to take something like spinach. Those things, just because of how much they are sprayed with pesticides, literally, we don't have a picture of this, but I mean, you go watch the movie Food Incorporated. There's, you know, when, people spray, when pesticides are sprayed on crops, you know, the, the, the workers are wearing these hazmat suits so they don't get the stuff on themselves. And again, some of these foods have a higher toxic load than others. So please make sure you're thinking about that. Kimberly, is this your slide? Yeah, I could take this one. So along those same lines, and again, the Food Inc. movie is really great at exposing this, but 
It takes approximately five to eight pounds of chemically sprayed grain to produce one pound of beef. And we in America are eating a lot of beef, conventionally raised beef. So not only do you have to worry about how the animal is raised and processed, but the pesticides that go on the food that, that the animal eats. And that's, you know, that should be um, pretty eye-opening. And so even in one glass's inorganic store-bought uh, milk, it has the residue of about 100 different antibiotics. And so once in our bodies, these antibiotics um, have an effect on our health. So those are just a couple of examples of how these things um, end up in our food supply. And same thing with um, things like excitotoxins that are hidden in our foods and things like MSG and some of the artificial sweeteners that are really just actually um, burning out pockets of your brain. It it's literally um, has that effect on the neurons in your brain. So you Kimberly, want to Kimberly, Kimberly, what's with picking on Starbucks down there in the bottom right corner? <laughs> what's that about? Yeah. Well, it, it was found that they actually started adding some of these excitotoxins to their coffee because guess why? It's addictive. Um, right. As if caffeine wasn't addictive enough, they needed to add some more in. So it's oh, just man. kind of exposed that it's actually hidden in our food supply. So again, even if you're being diligent and trying to be good about these things, they're sneaking and, it in and, on us. And, and one thing I might add as well, in that picture of that Starbucks coffee, um, you see that little lid that's sitting on the top? That's a number six plastic. That contains, uh, you know, um, nearly all coffee cup lids contain BPA, which is bisphenol A, which again has been banned now here in Canada. Because we know that these things do c disrupt hormones and cause cancers. So our bodies now take in, so again, when you get your coffee, please wait for it to cool down. Don't drink it in the car. Drink it slowly out of the cup, which is made of paper. Don't suck it back through a piece of plastic, which is one of the worst types of plastics, which is number six. The problem is we're now getting about you know 210 micrograms a day of this hormone disrupting chemicals, especially when the materials are hot or when they're super cold. Um, I said earlier, watch out for your coffee cups lids because those are number six. The other risks are number threes, and then your number sevens are your Nalgene, your old Nalgene bottles, which are no longer you uh, no longer available here in Canada. Uh, number three, I believe, is styrofoam. Um, you know, the plastic bottles, which are probably less of a risk, are one, two, four, and five. But we still really encourage people to, um, you know, buy, uh, you know, so, sorry, you know, use 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 less plastic. Obviously, the question always comes up about bottled water. And no, listen, I don't want to create an environmental problem either. Um, I think there's good, better, and best. For me, I have a water filter at home, and I do take care of uh, purifying my water here at the house. I put it in a stainless steel jug or a mason jar every day, and I take it with me. But if I am traveling, I will certainly buy bottled water because um, as much as I want to take care of the environment, boy, I want to take care of myself so, so I can take care of the environment. When you do look at what is in tap water, uh, there's just some harsh realities. You know, chlorine is still in tap water. Uh, we do know that then it does lead to CDPs, uh, chloroform byproducts, which include trihalomethanes and all kinds of cancer-causing products um, that, that also do cause the oxidization of cholesterol, uh, which, again, leads to heart disease. Uh, medications are popping up in city water all over the place. Uh, you know, most city water is still fortified with fluoride because we think that it prevents tooth decay. Well, sure enough, we found out years ago that it actually creates bone disease. And, you know, lead, you know, is in rotting city pipes all over the continent. And cities are doing their very best. But again, lead was an upgrade back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Even in, even in the 70s when my parents moved into the home where they still live, leaded paint was an upgrade. So if you were finishing your home, you, know, you would pay extra to get the lead paint um, because it was considered this higher quality paint. You want to go back a little bit further, mercury was used in many paints as well. So Unfortunately, these old rotting city infrastructures, there were things that we once thought were safe and we just know now are not. Right. And then so watch out for one. your bottled water. Right, right. And just as BJ mentioned, don't ever heat it up in plastic or freeze it in plastic. Um, don't ever put your foods in you know, either high or low temps in, into that plastic. But um, another problem, indoor toxicity, we talked about our indoor environment being more toxic than our outdoor. And one of the reasons is because everything is sealed up. And so mold becomes a huge problem. And because of HVAC, you have these, if you do have mold, you have these toxins circulating throughout the entire house instead of being you know, confined to the basement or something like that. 
And these molds have begun to um, morph and evolve and are resistant to everything that we try to do with them. So there's actually 24% of the population, and I suspect that number is even higher, that are genetically susceptible to this, meaning they don't produce antibodies to the biotoxins that mold produces. And these are the people that get really, really sick and are really difficult to, um, to get well. Um, and people really, people, people really need Kimberly, do I sound OK? Yeah. Do I sound OK, Kimberly? Yes. Go ahead. OK. People really need to be concerned if they are living in older homes, older buildings, if their kids are going to old schools with the flat roofs, because um, you know, those places you know, will have, if they've ever had water damage, they will absolutely lead to mold if that water damage was not taken care of. So mold is a huge, huge problem for about one in seven people based on where they work or go to school. You know, this picture here just is from Dr. Shoemaker's book, Mold Warriors, and he shows that really for all toxins, especially biotoxins, they're fat soluble. So he shows you a picture of how fats come in and they bind into, sorry, how toxins come in and bind into the fat cells. That's a major problem, and I'll show you why. The first thing is it now starts to burn out leptin receptors in your brain because, all, because of the toxins binding into the fat cells. And all of a sudden, now your brain can't really recognize that hormone, which is telling you to burn fat. The other problem is this. Listen, your body knows darn well that toxins are a lot more dangerous to the body than extra fat. So therefore, when your body has an opportunity to protect its own organs from toxins, it will create a layer of fat. It's protective fat because it wants to save its own life. So therefore, there are two reasons why toxins do lead to weight gain. Um, you know, so obviously when people start detoxing and they start getting the toxins out of the body, a lot of the fat will naturally go away because all of a sudden hormones are working better, plus that layer of slip protective fat is no longer needed. And this is just the reality for so many people who've been told you're not working out enough, you're eating too much, you're, you know, just all the stuff that people will be told. And the fact is toxins do lead to weight loss, uh, weight, weight loss resistance. Um, you know, lead is another one of those toxins. Yes, it's in the water. Guys, listen. It's also in some of the lipsticks that have been recalled and toys and all kinds of things, painted dishes. I personally don't want to wait until the next study. I'm going to start working to get this stuff out of my body right now. Um, you know, lead, lead and like other toxins, they will cross the placenta. I'll show you my story here very shortly um, that, you know, I had mercury, you know, accumulate in my body that I know crossed through the placenta from my mom. You know, we talk about mercury and how bad it is. You know, people used to play with it. Um, you know, we used to think it had some magical capabilities. People used to call it quicksilver because it was the only <laughs> it was the only liquid that would kind of ball up and you know f you know dance around on the floor. And people thought it was this really cool thing to play with. And now we find out it's the mo second most toxic substance on the face of the earth. Um, well, Dr. Now, BJ, it's all, yeah. Oh, just interrupt. I'm not sure where you were living, but when I was young, if someone broke a thermometer, it was run for the hills. It was evacuate the whole school. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's it's funny to me that, you know, I I grew up like that. You know, everybody was petrified of mercury, yet we're putting it into some of our, you know, water systems and into our mouths even. It's funny. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, you know, when you, when you look at it, we do know there are trace amounts of inorganic mercury in air and water and in other foods. Um, obviously, it gets worse when you start looking at things like fish and seafood. They are the number one source of methylmercury. So, again, that's why if fish are not coming from clean waters, You've got a problem. But check this out. This comes from the World Health Organization, 1991, along with the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. Dental amalgam fillings, listen, you're talking about probably nine times of a greater daily exposure to inorganic mercury in the adult population than eating fish every day. So the fact is, you know, dealing with these silver amal amalgam fillings is a major problem. You know, my dentist refers to silver fillings as mercury fillings. And people say, well, they're not all mercury. And he said, well, neither is cheesecake 100% cheese, but it's mainly cheese, so call it cheesecake. And I think that's a good explanation. The problem is this. The more amalgam fillings there is in somebody's mouth, the more mercury they're going to have in their organs. And also, the more mercury will be, be, be passed on into the fetus, which is no question how I accumulate a lot of my mercury uh, accumulation in my lifetime. Now, Kimberly, this picture. Yeah, so here's an example of the warning labels that come in on these things into the dental offices. And so as a good rule of thumb, anything with a warning label, you don't really want to be ingesting or have near or in your body. 
So um, it seems pretty, pretty self-explanatory, but unfortunately, it's, it's happening still. So why is mercury a problem? Second most toxic substance on the planet. It has an affinity for the brain and organs. It enters the body numerous ways, um, and it's concealed, and it's really hidden from us. Um, Dr. BJ mentioned some of the, the um, cosmetics, and for sure, mascara and, and lipstick and things like that. So this is just a picture, um, and I'll share a little bit of my story, too. And I think I mentioned this before, that my mom actually is 64 years old and has been diagnosed with full-blown Alzheimer's. This has been going on for several years, but um, through our research, we've been convinced that mercury was one of her issues, along with some other environmental things. But you can see in this picture how these microfibrils, um, these neurofibrils, actually get eaten away when they um, introduce mercury into this specimen here. So it's really amazing there's a video that actually shows this. And we're kind of going retro here tonight, but here's another example. 1972, this was a National Geographic magazine. And so none of this is really new information. We just need to get diligent about getting this out of our, um, out of our way and out of our bodies. Um, and so here you can see an actual um, cross-section of a brain of someone who is mercury toxic. And you can see where mercury actually eats away pockets of the brain. And if you were to look at my mother's um, MRI, you would see that picture right there with full pockets of her brain tissue missing. Um, and so it's frightening. It's really frightening. We have to be diligent about if we are exposed, which we are every single day, we have to be diligent about getting it out of our bodies and allowing our bodies to detoxify itself um, properly. So here's just you know, it, yeah. you know, Kimberly, I mean, I, I had a patient who um, just within, within the last two years was coming in, everything was going on, just hunky-dory. She turned 80 years old, and within two years' time, she went up from a completely fully functional 80-year-old woman to all of a sudden, now she's 82, full-blown Alzheimer's, can't function. Um, they've had to put her into a home. Uh, she, there's no coherence when she comes into my clinic whatsoever. Yep. And I mean, that's just, that, that's just, and, and people say, oh, she, she got Alzheimer's. No, she didn't get Alzheimer's that week. She built this, was built, this was building over time. Right. And it's just so sad. And people need to realize this doesn't go on in the non-industrialized nations. They do deal with other problems over there. However, um, in the non-industrialized nations where they're not dealing with major neurotoxins, you don't see things like Alzheimer's just show up. In people, you know, people people die from more, you know, natural causes. Obviously, yeah. look, these are some of the mercury poisoning symptoms. We've given everybody a chance to look at some of those. Yeah. However, I want to show you my own picture because a few years ago, when I was dealing with major digestive issues, um, I actually had my testing done, um, you know, through my naturopath, and I actually, you know, w you know, went in and I had had every other test in the world done to find out what was, you know, why, why can I not digest my foods properly, why am I having this alternating constipation, diarrhea, bloating gas, just really, really unpredictable pain, major fatigue, it was wiping me out like there was no tomorrow, but I thought I was eating right. Um, the fact is this, you know, when you look at this mercury right here, which is, you know, about halfway down, um, you know, it is in the severely, very elevated range, you know, and in fact, when I showed a number of my other providers this, they thought this was the highest that they'd actually seen. So, I, guys, I've been through this. Question just came in. Can uh, you know once mercury damage has been done to the body, can it be reversed? Listen, the principle in maximize the living and in all chiropractic is that you know God designed your body to heal itself. However, we do need to clear the interference. There are ways of getting these deadly toxins out of your body. However, it is critical that you remove the interference. And the truth is, your body's innate forces will take over, and you will heal. I've gone through the healing. And uh, again, this test I got done, you know, through my natural path. Doctors data, they actually do a lot of the testing um, and, and they actually work very closely with the autism groups um, because, of course, you know, many of the uh, autistic families do want to find out what their heavy metals levels are for their kids. Um, okay, um, here's um, my after before, test. So, before yeah, move, yeah, before you move to that, I just wanted to mention I'm completely symptom free, so I'm not suffering from any real ailments per se. I tested my mercury based on my mom's situation. Mine was 25. <laughs> Dr. BJ's here was 27. So that yeah. shows you that a completely symptom-free, yet my mercury load is extremely high. So if I want to avoid being in her situation, I better do something about it now. Go ahead. Yes, and, and again, this is just my follow-up, listen, because I, I, I did many things, you know, for a couple years to really get my levels down. Uh, we're going to talk about daily detox here momentarily because when I went through this, getting my mercury levels from, um, you know, 27 down to 2.6, you know, it, it, it was, which was a tenth, 
you know, there, there were many things that I had to do, and it was fairly complicated. And being a healthcare practitioner, I know probably the, the most difficult thing is um, the follow through. So if it's hard, people just um, you know may not be able to follow through uh, with 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 what I had to go through, which was taking all kinds of supplements. And Kim, I think we want to we want to talk about daily detox here, but yeah. you know, we just pulled out a couple more slides. Listen, we do need to be concerned about mercury not only in vaccines, which obviously is big in the news right now, but listen, also in the news, it's in high fructose corn syrup, you know, which is bad enough for you, never mind the fact that it's toxic. Um, of course, families are starting to say, well, which of these vaccines contain mercury? Then you look at chicken coops. Listen, don't, don't get me wrong. These commercial chickens, even if they're free of antibiotics, they're vaccinated. And yes, thimerosal is a mercury compound. So when people get toxic, it works like this. Listen, first you get toxins from your mom through the placenta. You know, many of us have been exposed to mercury as a child. Uh, you know, then we can have other heavy metals in the water. It's like our bucket's filling up, right? We, maybe we live in a toxic home or we spend some time in a toxic school where there's water damage or there's just this trickling of mold building behind the, um, you know, behind the showers, that, that type of thing. We don't even know what's going on. Um, then you get toxic food. Um, add it all up, now you get all these symptoms, then you take medication. Well, all medications have toxic doses, and my friends that have gone through medical school tell me that four years after their graduation, whatever they learned, half of it has been replaced because they find that these medic so many of these medications have to get pulled off the market because of their toxicity levels. It's just a matter of time before the bucket overflows. So obviously, Kimberly's saying her mercury level was 25 and mine was 27. My bucket had overflowed, but the number for everybody is different. We don't want anybody's bucket to ever overflow. You know, toxicity realistically is unavoidable. And again, it kind of works like this. You know, the first thing is there's a lifetime of poor diet. Then we introduce toxins. And then, and this is where maximizing and chiropractors play a huge role, once there's major physical nerve stress on your body, meaning a car accident, a divorce, some type of structural subluxation, uh, some type of emotional stress. Now you've got this classic neurotoxic, neurotoxic spectrum. So within maximized living, that's why there are five essentials. Clinically, we do want to look at toxins and diet and subluxation and all of it. We want to focus on how do we specifically deal with this accumulation of toxins, and now we get into daily detox. So Kim, why don't you take it from here? Yeah, so obviously we have to remove as many sources as we can. We've talked about that pretty much in depth tonight. Um, step two is we really have to detoxify at the cellular level. So that you can imagine that bucket, each one of your cells is its own miniature bucket. So you have 70 trillion cells and 70 trillion buckets that actually have to be detoxified as well. Um, and then you have to de detoxify the body itself. So you have to actually not only bind up those toxins, but you have to be able to remove them um, permanently once and for all. So we're getting into um, Maximize Living's brand new product, Daily Detox. So the ingredients in Daily Detox are, the, whole, the main idea of it is to help increase your body's own detoxifying mechanism, which is glutathione. Um, so that helps pull dangerous toxins from the blood, from the cells, from the tissues, and safely remove them. So some of the added benefits, and not everybody will have all of these, um, all of these benefits, but each person kind of responds differently. Lower cholesterol and reduce dangerous coagulation, accelerate weight loss, promote fat burning. Um, protects against allergens and reducing pain and inflammation, and really helps balance blood sugar as well. So the nice thing about it, too, is it has this added um, super antioxidant formula as well. So you can see some of the ingredients in that. And I'm sure you've seen all over the news or the radio and products that have cropped up all over the place um, that, ha that tout these antioxidants because of their pow powerful anti-cancer fighting agents. Um, and they work really tremendously well. Yeah, you know, and glutathione, you know, which is your body's natural detoxification system, listen, that, that, that alone is your body's number one antioxidant. When you think about other antioxidants, like vitamin C, for instance, it's only an antioxidant because it prevents wasting of glutathione. There it is. It's on this slide. That's the main thing we're looking to build up. That's your body's natural system. But you know what? It's a negative cycle or a negative spiral where the more toxins you're exposed to, the more glutathione gets run down, which means the less you can detox, which means the more toxins you get exposed to, and so forth and so forth. So having all these additional super antioxidants built into the product as well, 
just that much more helps to elevate your body's natural detoxification system and also helps fend off free radicals, which we know absolutely affect, you know, control cancer. The other detox is grouped into, into two, um, two parts here because obviously when you look at, um, you know, the first part, which is getting toxins out of the cells, that's part of it, then you need to get toxins out of the body. You know, so let me just break this down. And again, we're, we're, we, have, we have a bit of time to actually, you know, go through the actual process because, again, if somebody's going to detox, they need to do it properly. Now, listen, you know, when we look at something like cell detox, this is where we've got the right blend of all the amino acids, all the precursors to glutathione, everything that your body needs to help build up glutathione in the body. That's what we're looking to do with the, glut with, with the cell detox. By the way, that's what all the berry drinks are trying to do. They're trying to build up glutathione. The problem with the berry drinks, very high in sugar. I don't care if they're natural fruit sugars. Sugar is sugar. And of course, when we're trying to detoxify, I don't need to acidify my body or dump more sugar in there. Never mind other chemicals that are found in some of the more, some of the more um, you know, um, you know, processed types of berry drinks and, and everything that's behind that craze. So obviously, it's about building glutathione naturally. And you know, the thing is, there's many studies out there about glutathione. You can't, you really can't just take glutathione capsules. Um, and even injections, there's problems because it's all about how much gets into the cell and how much you know actually maintains its strength so that it can be utilized by the cells. The best way to do it is obviously take the things that make up glutathione and let your body build it on its own. Uh, when you want to study levels, guys, listen. Autistic children have half the normal levels of glutathione of what of what um, uh, of, of uh, you know what um, they, they they should have of, of sort of normal levels. Um, you know, so let me break this down. An average, an average North American's glutathione should be 1,200. Um, the average North American actually is 600. So autistic children will often be around 200 to 300. So Kimberly, this slide should say that the actual glutathione levels in autistic children, based on people who work with them, it's half of what the average population has. But even the average population is greatly, greatly run down. And of course, right. you know, Jill James at, at, at Arkansas Medical Sciences She's done studies on this as well. But it's all about helping kids detoxify at the cellular level, and that's why I want to help build up glutathione. Cell can detox. I mention, can I mention one uh, other yeah. thing real quick? Because also yeah. it's, it's proven that as you age, aging itself causes your glutathione to deplete. So it's really important as you get older that you're building that and boosting it as much as you possibly can because it's naturally um, not as high as it was when you were younger. I mean, look, look at this, though. You know, this, this is a comparative ORAC score. So whenever you hear about dark chocolate, I mean, I think it's hilarious when people tell me that they're going to have, you know, that they're getting their antioxidants because they're having dark chocolate. And it's you find that they're actually, well, yeah, no, they're having like a dark Mars bar. Right? I mean, we, I don't, do you have those in the States, Kim, yeah, Mars oh, bars? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so, so, so we're having a Mars bar, and we say, well, I'm having my dark chocolate for the day. I'm not getting the milk chocolate version. I'm getting the dark chocolate. But again, it's loaded with sugar and bad fats and all these cooked nuts and things. So listen, cocoa does have some antioxidant qualities. Um, you know, so does red wine. Well, sure enough, so now everybody has an excuse to drink. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so does garlic, and so do blueberries, and so do all of these foods. Now listen, per 100 grams, because the cell detox component of daily detox is so concentrated, and of course you're just doing a small bit every single day, um, on a gram-by-gram -gram basis, um, it far outweighs any of the antioxidants that someone can get, you know, from something like an acai berry or red wine or dark chocolate or pomegranates. Um, it's just absolutely, you know, right off the chart. So obviously when you look at this, you know, no, you're not having the equivalent of, um, you know, you know, a hundred and, and you know, you're not having a hundred and fifty times more, you know, um, uh, you know, cell detox than you would in blueberries. That's just physically impossible. This graphic is based gram per gram. What's the most potent, most powerful for your body? So, obviously, getting the antioxidants in is huge. Of course, this helps to build up glutathione. That leads to detoxifying your cells. The next step is obviously, you know, now you have all these cells of your body that are starting to detoxify. Um, but the problem is they now go into your gut. So in this picture, we want to, we want to you know, bind, we want to not only get them out of the cells, we want to bind them in the GI system and then completely remove them from your body. 
obviously what would be most ideal is if you never get re-exposed. The problem is everybody does. At least we're going to get rid of what has accumulated thus far through your body's natural detoxification system. You do need to realize that you know, your body has a built-in system known as your liver, which is there to help detoxify you. But again, the problems are fat-soluble. All this is showing you this graphic is that if we don't do something to bind and trap these toxins before they get recirculated back into the liver, we're just going to retoxify the body again. So there's many products out there that are like cell detox. There are many products out there that are like body detox. But until you put them in a two-part synergistic system, you're not going to have everything that you need to fully take the toxins from the cell out into the GI system and then completely out of the body. And we need to prevent retoxification you know, through cell detox and through body detox. In the cell detox, and I, we wanted to get into a little bit of this because obviously we feel that maximized living patients are some of the most um, educated people on the planet. Um, you know, we're looking to build up glutathione. Listen, Kimberly, we, we should correct this. You know, glutathione is not in the product. Right. Um, we're looking to we're looking to build up glutathione through its precursors, right. like NAC, N-acetylcysteine, for instance. Um, that is one of the major precursors that contributes to the actual building of L-glutathione, which is what your body needs. Um, you know, plus we've got other detoxifiers like glutamic acid and glycine, and then you get your antioxidants in there, which actually you know. Um, prevent the wasting of glutathione. And then, step two, once those cells start to unload, let's pull them out of the body. And there, there's two factors here. You know, body detox uses an activated carbon. It's actually a super activated carbon, which we know does bind up toxins in the GI system. Um, and again, this, 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 I mean, this has been used for years in countries you know, just on its own. Um, however, with, with, with our product, we want to make sure that that's not only in the body detox, but um, we've also, somebody asked about, you know, what's better about daily detox compared to the old NeuroCleanse? Well, there's many things. First of all, we do now have a super antioxidant formula in there, which really, really raises the ORAC score. But we've also added a substantial amount of psyllium husk, because as these toxins do get bind up in your GI system, we do want to make sure that there's a rich, soluble fiber that helps um, things move through the GI system. And of course, as we bind up you know, all these toxins and they come out of the body, of course we start to see weight loss because the body's no longer you know, creating that layer of protective fat and hormones are starting to get under control as well. And so, we, we know that most Americans don't get nearly enough fiber, so it really acts like a broom almost and sweeps those things out and leaves it in the system for a shorter period of time, um, and that's important as well. So Kim, Kimberly, why don't you just cover a little bit about you know, how somebody would order de daily detox? And what's great here is we have um, you know probably ten minutes to address some of the questions that have come in on my uh, window. Yeah. So um, to order this, all you have to do is go to maximizeliving.com. You can go to the health products section and um, find all of the health products there. As you go through the shopping cart, there's actually the ability to um, select your doctor, so that um, you know it'll come down in a drop-down list. So if you're seeing a maximized living doctor, you want to select that doctor. If you're not, you're still able to uh, proceed with the order. Um, so everybody will also get a $5 off coupon, which is really, um, really a good deal. The product is $74.95, yeah. I believe. And you, do want to write this you do want to write this down. So when you go to MaximizeTheLiving.com and you order it, you know, the coupon code is MYDETOX, and you can use that through May 16th, and that, that, that will save you money. And, of course, your friends can use that same coupon code as well. Um, one, one thing, if, if, you, if you are coming from a maximized living um, uh, doctor's office, you know, do, do, do select their name uh, because you know, you'll find we're going to talk about workshops coming up here. Um, yep. Kim and I love this opportunity to do these webinars. However, it's really critical that you get connected with the doctor. So you know, selecting your doctor's name will make sure that you start to receive um, you know, uh, information about upcoming programs and seminars and events. Um, in your local areas um, as it relates to not only detox and toxicity, but also nutrition and corrective care and maximized mind and, and everything else. So that, you'll see that when you go to the website. Yeah, and you also want to let them know that you've ordered the product so they can help support you through, your, um, through the process and through any supplementation that you're doing. Um, so definitely use your $5 off coupon. That's a really good, um, that's a really good coupon there. So a couple things, um, and then we can answer some questions. Our next webinar will be Tuesday, June 15th. 
um, at 7, and we're going to talk about smart shopping and really more on the toxicity issue, but avoiding the top 10 toxic foods and how you can um, better arm yourself with information when you go to the grocery store or order your food. Um, and then also this month at your Maximize Living doctor's offices, uh, there will be a workshop on nutrition for healthy families. So this is something that's great, especially for um, families with children who have a hard time figuring out what to feed their kids and how to get them to enjoy food. Um, so make sure you check with your offices about that as well. And then also coming in June, there will be a nationwide um, Maximize Living makeover, or some of them will be doing total food makeovers. So again, check with your doctor. These are amazing programs that you guys can all tap into that will literally transform your life. Um, it's just it's awesome to see the changes that we all see on a daily basis in people. Um, and it's not um, unique. Everybody can do it, and everybody can tap into these processes and get amazing results. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that, Dr. BJ? Um, you know, you know I, I really don't. We've, we've got a, a ton of great questions, and we wanted to uh, go through some of them. You know, Kimberly, you know, um, Kimberly, I wanted to just run everybody. We're, we're going to obviously have the, the webinar archived on MaximizeLiving.com. Um, Kimberly, as I go through questions, if, if you see that there's a certain slide you might want to pull up, maybe just, just go to it. Okay. Um, but, you know, obviously one, one of the questions that, that came up right away was, you know, will um, daily detox, um, you know, um, you know, help to pull mercury out of the body. Well, no, listen, daily detox is not a uh, chelating agent. So when you hear about things out there like um, DMSA and DMPS and products that were specifically designed to grab mercury, you know, th there's no product, you know, um, you know on, on the shelves at a health food store in your Maximize Living Doctor's office that goes into your body and grabs specific toxins. Um, Kimberly, maybe, you, I don't know if you want to, if you, for your computer, Kim, you could pull up some of the individual slides as, as they were related to these topics, like mercury, yeah. for instance. I don't okay. know. Um, listen, with, with mercury, listen, um, cell detox, for me, used to be um, about five products in, in one. Sorry, daily detox was five products in one. I was doing gel caps. I was doing powders. I was doing psyllium musk. I was doing all kinds of amino acids. And we had to do all these different things together um, to help my body to detox. And the truth is, you know, under supervision, I did, you know, look at some additional things. Um, but daily detox, we feel, is absolutely the start for most people. What's great, even if somebody has silver fillings in their mouth, they can still take it because, again, it's not going in and, you know, it's not a magnetic thing that goes in and binds to metals in your body. It helps your body detox as much as it is able to. We're just uh, enhancing your body's natural ability to heal. Your body will do as best as it possibly can at that moment in time. So that's how we relate it to, you know, um, something like something like mercury. Now, somebody, you know, a couple questions is, you know, how, how do we take these? Well, we just want to, you know, Kim, you might want to pull up the picture of the box. We've got, yeah. you know, cell detox is part of it, and body detox is the other part of it. You know, it, it is critical that cell detox, because it, it contains some some vital amino acids that that's not taken close to any protein. In fact, we just say take it at least an hour away from any meals. But the truth is, you can take it with anything else that you're doing with any other supplements. You can take it, you know, with any other, um, um, you know, vitamins. If somebody's taking medication, that, that cell detox, you can take it at any time. But remember, body detox that contains the activated carbon. You need to take that away from everything. Um, I believe on the box it says two hours because again, obviously, if we've just ingested some <laughs> multivitamin. I don't want to, you know, now start to detox of my multivitamin. We want to let those things get absorbed in the body first. So when body detox goes in, we're only, only, only going to bind up the toxins that have been, um, you know, dumped into the GI system and start to pull those out. So that's the way you do it. And, you know, it's been really simplified, you know, so some people say, well, do I have to take one before the other? Uh, do I have to do them between meals, before meals, after meals? No. Listen, it's four and four. For the average person, and again, the cell detox, just take four, you know, take them all at once. Take the daily the body detox, you can do four, take them all at once. It really doesn't matter whether one's in the morning or one's at night, um, because the fact this is an ongoing process. One of the other natural questions that someone asked was, well, gee, you know, um, how often do I do this detox? Well, you'll notice it's called daily detox. 
obviously Kimberly and I and you know your maximized living doctors are really working to ch change the paradigm in healthcare. And people need to realize that allowing yourselves to detoxify is something that needs to be taken care of every single day. When you see those five essentials at the top of your screen, maximized mind, maximized nerve system, maximized nutrients, maximized oxygen and lean muscle, and minimized toxins, <clears throat> when those are essentials, they need to be looked after every single day. Now the good thing is, you know, most people end up taking less and they take fewer multivitamins. They take, uh, you, know, uh, you know, fewer amino acids. They stop taking the berry drinks. They're not taking a separate antioxidant because it's all within daily detox. So certainly, you know, this is, this is something that, um, you know, I, I incorporate with my daily, daily nutritional regimens. Um, and, and therefore, on an ongoing basis, it doesn't matter whether you take one in the morning or one at night, because it's an ongoing process. Um, naturally, a question has come in, you know, can children use daily detox? Well, um, so to Lydia, who answered that question, I'm really sorry that, I, that I, I, I have to answer it this way. You do have to realize that when all products are uh, designed by our high-quality labs that we work with, um, you know, obviously, they, all products will say that this is not designed for women who are pregnant or children under the age of 18 years old. What I would suggest is if someone on the line is pregnant or someone does have children with health issues, please speak to uh, preferably your maximized living doctor uh, or another doctor to make sure that you're following uh, you know, appropriate health and detoxification and nutritional guidelines if you happen to fall into one of those groups where it says, Ah, you know what? This isn't designed for kids, and it's not designed for pregnant females, and so forth. And that's you know that, that you can look on the back of just about any nutritional bottle, and and unfortunately you'll find that. So make sure that those things are just uh, under close watch with your uh, with your practitioners. Kim, do you do you see a, a, a question a question yeah. uh, theme that stands uh, out that we should hit next? Sure, I saw one about how you sh how should you be eating when you're doing this daily detox. That's detox. great. Yeah, so, yeah, we make sure, first thing is get to that Nutrition for Healthy Families workshop at your Maximized Living Doctor's office right. um, later, later this month um, because that, that's really where you're going to learn the plan. Obviously, if, if you're eating garbage, it's all the more reason to be detoxing on a daily basis, but obviously it's going to be more effective if you're eating better. So that's why your doctors will do things like total food makeovers and they'll do things like Maximized Living makeovers and workshops, and that's yep. why we'll teach you how to shop next month on the webinar as well. And we see with um, the advanced plan um, that really helps people when they're dealing with symptoms and weight loss and things like that. So it just accelerates your detoxification process. So you definitely want to learn all about that. It's all in the book, and you want to make sure you get to your doctor's um, workshops that they have on this very topic. So that's very important. <laughs> you don't want to. Somebody asked a great. Somebody asked a great question about you know like is the daily detox going to decrease my energy levels? Well, listen, you know, when your body is healing, every symptom is your body doing exactly what it needs to at that moment in time. Now, you know, traditionally we think of a cleanse or a traditional detox as something that can really, really wipe people out and be taxing on your body. Um, this is a gentle detoxifier, you know, so we're gently and slowly and gradually allowing your body to detoxify on an everyday basis, um, you know, when we're under this constant bombardment. So therefore, um, you, know, you know, typically, you know, when you take these things, you know, we're adding proper things to the cells that the body does need. Now, the truth is, the more toxicity somebody has to deal with, the more signs of healing that they could potentially go through in the first, you know, you know, few months of using any, you know, healthy product, uh, or especially, especially if it's new to them. Um, however, just like with chiropractic care, I would say if people experience those recovery symptoms, it's typically in the early stages, never in the long term. And you know what? It's just a sign that your body's starting to heal. So and they're typically mild, and we actually consider it a good sign because you actually know something is happening. And we're not talking about anything drastic. It may be minor headaches or something like that, but for the most part, it's your body saying, you know, letting you know that something good is happening there. Um, you know, um, I saw another one here um, asking about someone using the Nature Pro um, protein. Oh, yeah, great, great, question, great question, great yeah. question. Well, yeah, one, one of the things with Nature Pro, again, you know, I, you know, something else, you know, Nature Pro does help with glutathione as well, um, although it's not designed to be an antioxidant product. It, 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 it is just true that whey protein also helps to build up your glutathione. Now, of course, you know, with, with the whey protein, that's meant to be more, you know, used as a meal 
um, you know, this is meant to be more of a dietary supplement. So, you know, obviously, you know, we talk about in, in the in the maximum living nutrition plans. You know, you have the three major dangers, and one of them is toxins. Um, and then also, we want to make sure that you're getting in quality protein. Quality protein, great way to do it with Nature Pro, and it's only going to complement what you're doing with eliminating toxins from your body. And here's the great thing too, Dr. BJ already mentioned it, um, that this process has been greatly simplified. Um, so that's wonderful. And the products that we have, the core products that Maximize Living has now, are the core products that will actually boost your ability to adhere to the five essentials and to really boost your yeah. nutrition. So it's really been a simplified process. You don't need 100 different supplements. Um, those four, the vitamin D, the um, Pro Omega, the Nature Pro, and the Daily Detox are really a good core um, set of products that can really get you well on your way to better health. You know, Kim Kimberly, uh, here, here's a good question because you talked about some simplification of the process, and uh, yeah. I mean, this is huge. Uh, somebody, we talked about the differences between Daily Detox and the old Neural Cleanse, and I mean, we've had, we've had um, a fairly extensive team of, of chemists look at the product and, and how it can be improved, and also, obviously, we looked at, you know, patient outcomes across the, um, you know, the, the, the network of, you know, you know, about a thousand maximized living healthcare centers across the United States and Canada, and of course, you know, we, you know, chemists feel and doctors feel that this is obviously a, an enhanced formula. Um, obviously, in the old neural cleanse, there was one question, but you know, are there different phases? You know, so you you take it differently one month than you do the next month. Um, you know, and again, that that's 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 not you know apparently necessary. So again, the the the, the, the system has been greatly simplified. You know, a box of daily detox is de is designed to last an average adult, you know, a one month basis. Um, and certainly, if somebody you know, you know, is dealing with more toxic stress on an everyday basis, they are certainly free to take more. If somebody is you know under less stress, so they do need to um, you know stretch things out over a period of time, uh, you know, because they're not going to pick up their next order for six weeks. Yeah, they can stretch it out over six weeks. But but at the end of the day, it's meant to be something that would be looked at. Really, I think it's like the new multivitamin for the 21st century. When you look at the problems that people. Uh, are facing now, Kim. Kim, do you see any final questions that are huge that should be uh, addressed here? Um, I think we've pretty much covered most of them. If not, we'll um, post the frequently asked questions. We'll answer any that we didn't get to and post them on the website, um, as we do with all of our webinars. And the webinar itself will be um, archived and posted on the Maximize Living website. So if you have friends that you know should have heard this information and didn't, um, you can direct them there to MaximizeLiving.com. But I think we hit all of the, um, all of the major questions there. Yeah, well, listen, right and, and I don't. <laughs> so, Kim, I said we're right on time. That's great. Yeah, and, and so listen, make sure you do. You know, get on to maximizeliving.com. You know, um, you will you will see there's you know um, an ever growing expansion of the Maximize Living websites with more and more resources, um, and also your own doctors. You know, if they're affiliated with Maximize Living, they'll have plenty of resources for you as well, um, because obviously we can cover general. Uh, uh, you know, general guidelines for healthy living here for you on the computer once a month. Uh, but really, when you want to look at applying it within your own town, do make sure you get connected with somebody who can be your local resource for you there. So we do you wish, wish you good luck. We look forward to hearing your feedback as people get started on the product. Um, and of course, we will speak with you next month on the webinar on uh, healthy shopping. So everybody have a great night. Bye, everybody. <laughs>